Hey everybody, welcome to Falcon Place Renowned Explorers International Society. If you're familiar with the channel, you know for a fact I've covered Curious Expedition in the past, and Renowned Explorers kind of plays up to that Curious Expedition mentality quite a bit. Slightly more streamlined than Curious Expedition, a little bit less roguelike, light-ish in a sense. However, the mechanics are a little bit more in-depth than something like Curious Expedition. If you're not familiar with the channel and you're wondering what I'm talking about, what you're trying to do is actually get your name on the map, become the most famous explorer of your time. So right off the bad we get to choose either discovery mode or adventure mode essentially adventure mode think of it as your iron man mode in a sense you know where if you die it's game over for the premise of this video and maybe this little few episodes i'm going to cover this game on we'll do discovery mode just because it makes it a lot easier if i do somehow fall in defeat i don't really have to start all over and i would like to show you more of the game as we actually progress forward here so we'll do discovery mode for that fact alone so we'll select our crew now and then um we'll go ahead and well, yeah sure leave that on for now right now what we have to do is actually choose a captain and then we'll pick two crew members for our expedition over here. Uh, it should be noted that initially you only have four captains available when you first start the game, which are going to be here, 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 and here. Your crew members then, this will open up completely and you'll be able to pick anybody else. But I'm pretty sure in order to unlock these other people as possible captains in the future, you probably, as you can see over here, for instance, Earl Shanty. Um, to unlock this crew member as captain, complete two more expeditions with this character. So essentially, if I wouldn't unlock him, I would have to use him as my crew member for two expeditions, and then I would unlock him as a captain. So keep that in mind. There's definitely a bunch of different things to actually start with over here if you want to get more of these characters as your captain. Um, for this pr uh, little video we're doing over here, probably a few more, I kind of have an idea who I'm going to go with, which is going to be Harry Walker as my captain over here. Now, Harry's going to be really interesting. He's more of a glass cannon type of individual, really low defenses. He's a scout, obviously, but he has a really high attack power and speech skills. However, he is very weak, so if he gets, um, it's going to sound kind of weird me saying it, but if he gets talked to or if he gets attacked, he's going to go down relatively fast. So you kind of have to keep him in the back line a little bit and maybe covered around with a few tanky individuals. So I'm going to be going with Harry Walker over here, who happens to be from Britain, here in age 21. Harry was a street urchin who survived on the streets by pickpocketing. Now he's a cunning and charming leader. Harry is a glass cannon scout with a very high speech and high attack, but with barely no defenses, which is basically what I just covered right now. Uh, recommended crew to go with devious and aggressive. And this will be more of what I'm talking about here, and I'll cover this more as we actually progress forward here. But he's going to be our captain, so we're fine with him. Let's go over to select crew members. You can see now this completely opens up for us, and we can set up our little party right here. I'm going to go just because I'm a big wrestling buff and I'm still a wrestling geek. It's still real to me, damn it. I'm going to go with Dolores Garcia. Happens to be 28 years old from Mexico. Luchador mask, I'm all in for it. Dolores won many tournaments but kept her identity hidden behind a mask. Now she travels the world in search of new things to punch. And she's going to be more of your aggressive type of uh, personality. More tanky as well, so it kind of compliments Harry Walker quite a bit. Look at this awesome mustache right here. Charles Templeton, 40 years old from Britain, ex-sailor and then ex-butler from Manchester who wants to rub elbows with the Queen, knows how to throw a punch and an insult. So he's basically kind of like a fighter, but he does have some defenses to him, so it kind of works out pretty good. Now, we haven't covered this over here, which is Diplomat and Survivalist. There's going to be a bunch of random events which actually um, you have a better chance of succeeding in if you have certain skills that actually placate to that sort of event. But again, we'll cover that more as we go along here, but I just want to give you a quick little rundown right now. So I think we're ready to go. This is going to be my party. Let's start our adventure right here really quickly there might be a little bit of a tutorial early on if there is I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of it and I'll try to you know tutorialize it myself a little bit not too much so we could actually get the ball moving and rolling over here alrighty guys and here we go this is gonna be the very first expedition for us we have the Viking landing this is it you just got your renowned Explorers International Society membership Harry wants to make a big entrance and goes for an elusive treasure the Viking ship Rumors are that a boat belonging to the famous explorer Leif Erikson is somewhere in this forgotten island. So right now we're going to go ahead and skip the tutorial because I'll go ahead and kind of explore it a bit more as we go forward here. And um, this takes a little bit of a while too, so I don't want to bore you with that. Let's go ahead and time for adventure. So this right here is going to be our main goal. Right now, as you can see up top, we have seven of seven. These will be our supplies. Essentially, well, I guess I'll read this here first. Everyone's a little bit nervous. The first expedition is crucial for the crew's confidence. The crew starts off with low resolve. If the crew reaches zero resolve, the crew loses its will to explore and your adventures are over. However, every expedition you complete will give you more resolve. Alright, and up here is going to be the resolve. As uh, the game mentioned, if that hits zero, it's going to be game over. You have to retry all over again unless you're playing Iron Man mode. Then it's game over instantly. You have to start from the start. No retries. It should be noted in Iron Man mode, you do start off with eight resolve, which is the one I was playing with earlier. And um, I guess you do start off with more resolve in Iron Man mode because if you die in that, it's game over instantly. While in Discovery mode, you do have a chance of retrying if you fail. Now, what I was trying to talk about was the supplies up here, which we have seven of seven. 
Supplies actually work in a way that it gives you a chance to jump around the map here to actually find some more things to explore, more treasures, more uh, money, more status, etc, etc. So what you want to do is use these all up before you jump to your main goal, because when you jump here, it's basically, well, not game over, but you know, you're leaving the island whenever you're ready to get out of here. Um, so you definitely want to use up your supplies before you get out of here, so you actually get more money, more treasures along the way. And speaking of these events over here that you'll get involved with, all these have different chances to give you money, status, research points, insight. We'll collect more of these as we go along and I'll be able to show it off more clearly then, but it's really simple. You don't usually use all, any of this stuff until you're in the main map after you finish an expedition. You get a chance to level up your people, buy equipment, study more research, you know, so on and so forth. But for now, let's actually get underway here. Let's see, we have unexplored over here. This is going to cost us one supply. And we have practical resources maybe found here. This is going to be supplies as well. One is going to cost us. And there's going to be a wits challenge. A tactician, beguiler, or quick thinker may be useful. I do believe Dolores is a quick thinker. Yeah. Okay. So let's give this a try. This will be like a random event where you could use some of your um, skills that your individuals will actually carry. Sometimes your crew finds opportunities to promote itself shamelessly in the eye of the locals to gain status. However, say something offensive or make a wrong move and no one will like you. Whose turn is it for social duties? Uh, <laughs> duties. Uh, anyway, um, unfortunately for us, if we complete these, we have a few rewards over here and with our name on it. For instance, Charles has the highest success chance at 40. If he succeeds, he'll get locals going to be impressed. Uh, we'll also get two status points to the campaign, and we'll also get a bonus one token of campaign. If we fail, locals will be offended. Hmm. Well, 40%, I'd rather not take it, but for the purpose of this video and show off the feature, I'm going to go ahead and try it out. Maybe you will win. Now, when you do this, you'll kind of trigger this here. This is going to be our... In oh, no. Oh, we got it. Oh, the locals are very impressed by Charles. Wow. Wow. You're so cool. We have to tell everyone, these people are saved from ignorance by your majestic self. And we acquired some status points right there. Excellent. Campaign tokens, I should say. And these will be turned into status points once we're done over here as well. So right now we're collecting tokens. And once you're done with the expedition, you actually turn them into um, these points over here. But right now we're just kind of collecting them as we go along. So that's pretty good. Um, that little spin wheel actually can be triggered to have a higher su uh, success chance when you actually open up some more abilities and research down the line. But again... We'll get to that point. I'm jumping a little bit ahead over myself here, but there's so much to cover about this game, and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so right now we have another jump. This is going to be a cultural challenge, and it's going to be a... There's something odd here, and there's a trader here. I've never messed with a trader before, so let's go ahead and try that one instead. You enter a shop that sells supplies for some work. However, this guy seems to be the one shady shopkeeper. This is actually crossed out for us. Buy four supplies for seven resolve. Oh, it's crossed out because we have nowhere near that amount of resolve and we don't want to do that because it's going to be game over. These prices are outrageous. Negotiate for better terms or leave the shop. Let's go ahead and try to negotiate with this guy and see if this works out for us. Someone needs to go and negotiate for better terms. This is simply unacceptable. This guy seems like a tough match and the diplomatic struggle will give someone the diplomat negotiations perk. Oh, so we have a chance to actually gain a perk here too. Um... So who's going to give it a try here? Well, we already have a diplomat in Charles, so let's go ahead and give it to Harry, who happens to be a slick talker himself too, according to the, you know, um, details that we read earlier on. The shady shopkeeper gave you, gave into your diplomatic negotiations. You can now get supplies at a normal price. So four supplies for one resolve. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, it means that we can't really risk anybody getting knocked out or it is game over. But we will be able to actually jump four more times around if we do this. Now, our cap is seven, so we might want to come back here once we're probably down to three and then try it out, but we'll see. Uh, for now, we leave, though, and then he picked up Diplomat Negotiations as a perk. Perfect. Alrighty. So, this is going to cost us zero supplies, huh? Cool. Might as well jump there, then. While scouting the area, a goofy-looking man comes running up to you. Are you by any chance renowned explorers? You see, I'm kind of a big deal here, and I would love to travel with them and be part of their entourage, you know, to see the world. Ah, we got somebody joining our crew, great. Why yes, we are renowned explorers. The man is very happy. I can't wait, I'll promise to take your campaigns more effective. The rushes, he rushes to the airship, a strange figure, but you're sure he'll come in useful. Entourage, let's talk about this here really quickly. He also gave us another token, great. Let's review our entourage. Uh, we'll be able to use up some of these points to hire 
lobbyists, merchants, and I forgot what the third one is, or researchers. And they'll actually, what they'll do is that they'll give you more campaign tokens when you're in expeditions, will actually turn into more points for you to actually acquire at the end of a journey itself. So this will cost you money, or at least tokens, but um, getting a free one right off the bat is pretty good because I believe the first one that you unlock is going to cost you 40 tokens of status. So, you know, that's a free 40 uh, status points right there that we got from a random event, which is actually pretty good. All right, so we have five of seven supplies left over. This will be an encounter. You know what? Let's do an encounter because I would love to show off the combat system in the game before we do wrap it up here. Uh, two villagers keep following you and annoying you with well-intentioned questions. Wow, you come from all over the world. Wow, you've been to London. Wow, you like Brussels sprouts. Wow. Oh, man, these guys are just, um, you know, they're excited to see people that they are not really familiar with. These friendly gentlemen need to be convinced to stop following you. We're going to engage with them. Now, the combat. We don't necessarily have to fight them, mano a mano. We could go the friendly approach here, and if we go with a friendly approach, you actually do get uh, an encounter token, which will give you 10 to 15 status and 15 to 20 gold at the end of the expedition. And also will give you a small amount of renown, which is a uh, renown, which is actually used to kind of rank you in the renowned explorers guild, which we'll talk about soon. Um, so keep in mind, you don't have to do that. You could definitely go by the devious or aggressive route as well. Uh, we'll probably give it a try, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that one. Let's see. Uh, it depends on what skills you have as well. The impress one is going to be friendly, so we could use that. We could just try to impress them over and over with um, Harry Walker. We have only, what, three people to deal with? Yeah. So I guess we don't have to go mano a mano here. We can just basically use our speech attacks for this one. So let's start off with Harry. Let's move him. Let's see, Harry's kind of weak in terms of uh, defenses, so we want to keep him behind some cover. This will make them, what, friendly as well. Okay, and this will make them friendly as well. Okay. Let's see, with this one here, target becomes impressed if it's in a positive mood already. Okay. If they, if they could become impressed, I do believe they join your party for the remaining of the fight, if I'm correct here, but I could be wrong about that one. Target becomes confident if it is positive. Okay. So let's start off with our friend Charles over here. We will try to... Well, no, no. We need to make him impressed, don't we? So... Let's see. Becomes impressed if it's in a positive mood. Target becomes confident if it is positive mood. Well, let's start off with that one then. We'll move you over here for now. And we'll try to encourage this guy. Oh, he's already in a positive mood. Oh, good on you. Good on you, my friend. So, this is going to just basically amplify that here a little bit. Ah, good mood. Alrighty. However, you should note that by doing that, I did buff him up a little bit. Now his um, attack power went up a little bit by doing that. So it's uh, something you definitely have to take advantage of here and make sure that you're not going to positive or boost them too high where you're trying to do like a friendly route here. So you definitely have to play a bit more tactical about it. I can't move this guy, can I? No. Okay. So this is giving me what he can move to right now. So I'm going to have her just block his patch. She is the highest defensive member that we have. So... Even if he does get an attack off, it shouldn't be enough to actually knock her out, so we should be fine. Uh, let's try to do the same over here if we can. So if they're already in a positive mood, which is everyone's nice, that's the mood right now, we could just go over here and try to impress them already. Let's see, how far can this hit? From here, right? Okay. Let's move Harry Walker down to this side, and we will try to hit this guy with an impressive mood. And if he does, he should either leave... Oh yeah, he's gonna probably leave. Common villagers impressed by you and doesn't wish to stop you. Alrighty. Ha <laughs> ha. Good. Charles, let's see here. How far can you land yours? Pretty far too, right? So let's move you up here. He's in a good mood already, so we'll go ahead and try to impress him as well. 80% chance to land. Not as high as the other one, but if it lands... Oh, it did. Oh, not enough for the knockout. Remember, he is the glass cannon. Harry is, so his attack power is a lot higher than um, Charles here, so keep that in mind. Um, but he's impressed now, which is good. So we're done with our turn. Let's go ahead and end it here. So he's going to probably be coming after us? Yep. What are you going to do? Ah, you love me too, huh? All right, everybody's in a good mood over here right now. <laughs> and you're just going to straight up attack me more than likely. No, no, you're in a happy mood too. Which is fine, because instead of what we've did with the confident ability is actually boost his attack power. But because everybody's in a friendly mood based to the uh, mood of the map itself and what I've actually boosted with the skills that I actually have thrown around, it's made the map completely friendly for the most part. So they're going to try to just talk it out as opposed to actually using physical attacks. So um, that's a pretty interesting mechanic for sure. That's why I kind of enjoy this game a lot too, because the 
battle mechanic is not just your common run up to somebody, attack them over and over till they're dead. It does mix it up a little bit because you could definitely take that attack route, but at the same time you could definitely use this little speech uh, mechanic here as well. Um, I don't think we could actually land an attack here with Harry. So what we should do then is just finish this guy off right now by impressing him and getting him out of the map already. And again, remember, if we actually beat this map in a friendly status, we are going to get a bit more extra encounter tokens, which we will be able to trade in for more positive tokens uh, at the end of the mission itself. All right, so that's done with. Charles, can you get up here? N probably. You should be able to actually hit this guy from that point. There you go. And that should hopefully be enough. Oh, yeah. He's done, Ski. Alrighty, so we actually got through this battle. It's the first fight, so I don't expect it to be too difficult. Just basically here to show you the mechanics, how it works out. And we got three tokens of encounters, which again, we can actually turn into... We got two from the fight alone, and then this is the bonus one that we got by finishing in a friendly mood after all. So we got 10 to 15 status and 15 to 20 gold, which you again will trade in after the expedition is over itself. In a kind but firm manner, you explain to them that you have to leave now. Once Harry gives them some foreign candy, they thank you wholeheartedly and go away. The crew proceeds with the expedition. Now again, this is really important to note because um, if you want to kind of steer your expedition in a certain manner, whether it's like a friendly expedition, an aggressive one, all of these things will actually have a big impact on the game as you go forward. So you might not want to be aggressive sometimes because you'll have certain events that will really trigger based on your friendliness factor, devious factor, aggressive factor, so on and so on. Um, alrighty, let's go ahead and level up Charles while we're at it here. Let's see, I'm gonna go with the... I'm gonna go with Survivalist Tracking, that sounds pretty good. This will give me more Grid. Mm. Grid's pretty good to avoid attacks, but it's only 3% chance, it's more better for a scout, so I'm gonna go with the Diplomat after all then. Unlock this one instead. Great. Okay, so we still have 4 supplies left over, let's go ahead and jump, I would say status to be gained here, and there is also a wits challenge. Tactician, Beguiler, or Quick Thinker. Do we have any of those? I know we have a Quick Thinker and Dolores, but that's about it, huh? Yeah, so it would have to be a Dolores event for sure. Yeah, let's give it a try, why not? The crew arrives at an open theater where there are some villagers are going to perform a piece about the Vikings. The director approaches you. One of our actors is sick, and a stand-in is not very talented. Maybe it would be fun if one of you would play the Viking Jarl. It'd be great for the people to see a new face. Uh, it's only Charles, huh? I thought it would be, um, Dolores. Huh. He only has a 56% chance of, um, winning this one, but might as well try it out. Who knows? Maybe we'll get luck out again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, stop! Yeah! Alright! RNG is helping me out today. Charles seems to be the accomplished actor. No lines were fumbled. Mind you, it's Charles, the British ex-butler. Of course he could play off an amazing acting role. Then again, he is playing a Viking, so that's a bit different. Uh, the crew leaves behind a bedazzled crowd who are now clamoring for your autographs. Great. And we got a few more tokens for that one. Excellent. We have another fight over here. We still have three more supplies. Remember, we have a chance to come back over here and buy some supplies if we really wanted to. But let's actually jump over here, then up here, and then probably to the go, I would say. The crew is walking through a seemingly boring landscape. Suddenly, Harry finds a small piece of iron. It looks like a broken Viking sword. The crew starts investigating the area to see if there is any more. Look carefully. There is an ancient Viking battlefield. Harry imagines the wondrous treasure that is to be found here, not to speak the f of the same fame, awaiting you for such a prestigious discovery. Harry ponders what to do next. So we're going to start looking around. The crew goes on and starts looking around like true explorers. After 40 minutes of soul investigation, Charles finds something. What did you find, Charles? What did you find? Oh, nice, a Viking shield. This is going to actually grant us 25 renown and one insight. Uh, the renown is obviously going to be how you rank up in the guild itself after you're done an expedition. You want to get to first place, you start off in the last place, so you never acquire a bunch of renown, which is acquired by completing missions or expeditions and also finding treasure. You got to find treasure if you want to move up the ranks easily. Um, let's see, this also gives us three campaign tokens and level two athlete gains plus five armor, Ooh, which is going to be her. She'll get some armor at level 2 athlete. Great. I'll take the treasure now. This is a good find. A fine treasure to take home. With the battlefield fully stripped of its secrets, the crew can continue with an amazing day to the renowned explorers. All right. And we have two more supplies left over. I don't think we'll be able to jump. Actually, we can. We could do one here and then here. Uh, I'm going to hold on to my resolve. So I'm thinking we do jump here and then to the actual 
completion of the mission itself so we can get into the um, portion where we use up all our skills here, which I want to show off. All right, so let's wrap it up here for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support does mean a lot. I will catch you next time.